My earliest memory is of uh, standing in front of the mirror and saluting myself. I never thought of uh, joining business. I never thought of counting numbers and becoming an accountant. I just, my only passion was to wear the uniform. I joined against the wish of my parents, became a paratrooper, became a special service uh, leader, specializing in desert warfare to start with. And then I had a good progression. I got my promotions on time. I commanded my battalion as a colonel, a brigadier, uh, as a brigadier in the northeast part of India, as a major general in the northern part of India, I had the good fortune of serving in United Nations on two previous occasions, one as a military observer and the second as a staff officer. First in Angola, which was a unique kind of a mission itself, when peacekeeping was just about taking off, and second as a, in Khartoum, Sudan, before uh, South Sudan split from Sudan. You see, the mission has transitioned from one which was dealing uh, with political violence between two or three major parties to now largely uh, intercommunal violence or community violence between community-based uh, militias, which results in possibly more loss of lives and uh, as much if not more displacement. Deployment in small detachments across the state uh, is one decision that uh, we as a mission have taken and that has definitely saved lives even if it has not uh, protected all. The second important decision I feel is our mobility remains a challenge. You are pretty aware, uh, aware of the kind of terrain that we face in South Sudan which is marshy, swampy, non-negotiable in uh, most uh, of the wet season and uh, although we knew that uh, people were dying, people were killing each other, we were unable to respond. So. We are getting um, all-terrain vehicles in the form of SHERPs, not an ideal military solution, but at least uh, will provide mobility to the force to reach areas of conflict where we could not even reach, even though we knew that people were indulging in violence. Our presence would have enabled it to uh, control that violence. Firstly, it's the uh, safety and security of peacekeepers who have deployed on my instruction. I want to be assured that they are safe. Uh, they are not uh, working or functioning in a normal environment where you have uh, possibly their acceptance. The blue flag and the white vehicle has been accepted as, as a neutral force. So you could have conditions where they may come under attack. And a small force, if it is located in an area which is violent and which does not respect them could lead to a disaster. So that is something that constantly motivates me, guides me to see that, ensure that they are safe and secure. The second is the responsibility that I've got as a force commander and that is of protecting lives. I don't want to be sitting here when uh, people may be dying uh, outside. I feel that the UN system is very slow to respond to, to situations and um, there may be a requirement of a faster process uh, since our principal job and our resources have to be prioritized for protection. We cannot rely on long bureaucratic procedures while people die. This is not like a defense of a country. This is peacekeeping. Women part, women form often more than 50% of the population. And if their concerns and their security, their threats 
abuses that uh, have happened if they are not addressed appropriately by peacekeepers i think we are failing in our in our duties our women are doing a phenomenal job in very very difficult uh, circumstances often without anything available that uh, that uh, should be available to women out in the field but they still volunteer to do uh, the tough duty and um, move shoulder uh, shoulder to shoulder with uh, men peacekeepers and actually do far more democratic structures take time to build uh, the process has started i do hope that the leadership uh, is able to get the framework of their society and of their government going established and that will then set up uh, the path for future growth building a nation is not a matter of years it is a matter of decades it's a time consuming process okay, what is the patience resilience that they have in supporting but then you have people who are vulnerable can you turn a blind eye and say okay you do what you want and uh, we cannot uh, we cannot keep a large peace keeping force here uh i don't think we can do that either there were um, people who died here and their bodies could not be sent back in time so you did have you did face huge personal sense of loss during this period of time but through it all i can uh, be very very happy that we never uh, wavered on our mandate and uh, the peacekeepers continued uh, not uh, not bringing their personal problems uh, affecting their work and we discharged the mandate for which uh, we have been sent here by the security council hello how are you very good thank you welcome thank you so yeah. whatever you do you cannot put a person in a line of fire you cannot put lives at risk if uh, you haven't given them a fair and a very good chance of being successful we would also like to know uh, what in your view is the I'll be happy to shed this uniform. Uh having worn this without a single scar, having worn this very proudly over this long period of time. I'm very proud of having achieved of being decorated and have it having lived to the credo that a uniform man should be living. So that makes me happy and I'll be very happy to shed it. That I've done my bit and I'm not going to look back again. So that's a history. you know if you see the benchmarks of what makes a life your your family uh, your profession your partner very lucky to have a very very supportive partner a very good single child a career which is which has progressed with time which has been diverse in in terms of the areas that i have served and the experiences that i have that i have gained from each Uh, and i finished this career as the head of a largest peacekeeping force so uh, what would i have had differently i am very fortunate i am very lucky